Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, we are going to take another problem that is going to be different from the problems that we saw before. In this problem, we are dealing with floor function. In particular, we are going to solve an equation that we are seeing here. On the left hand side of this equation, we have power of 2 of the floor of 2x plus 3 times floor of x. On the other hand, on the right hand side we have floor of x to the power of 2 minus 3 times floor of minus x. We are going to find all possible values that we can have for x to satisfy the equation that we have here. Before moving forward to talk about the solution, make sure that you pause the video to think about this problem and we will see you in about 15 seconds. Meanwhile, please consider subscribing to this channel and we will see you in a bit. To solve this problem, let's review the problem again. We have power of 2 in both sides of this equation. The first thing that I'm going to do is to basically move power of 2 on one side and then see what we are going to get. If we do this, then on the left hand side we have power of 2 of floor of 2x minus power of 2 of floor of x and on the right hand side we have something very interesting. We have 3 times floor of x and 3 times floor of minus x. Let's factor out negative 3 from the right hand side first and see what we are going to get. If we do this, on the right hand side we are going to have negative 3 times floor of x plus floor of negative x and we are going to keep the left hand side as is. I'm sure you are seeing some pattern here. We have floor of x plus floor of negative x. If you remember, this expression itself can be simplified to some extent. Let's do that and see what we are going to get. To solve this problem, let's review what we have now on the right hand side first. We have floor of x plus floor of negative x. Obviously if x is an integer then floor of x and floor of negative x are going to be just x and negative x. If you add them together you will get 0. Now let's assume that x is not an integer. Let's just start with an example. Assume that x is 1.5 then floor of x is going to be floor of 1.5 which is 1 on the other hand floor of negative 1.5 is going to be negative 2 if you add them together you will get negative 1 now let's start with a negative number assume that x is negative 1.5 in that case Floor of negative 1.5 is going to be negative 2 and floor of negative x is going to be floor of 1.5 which is 1. If you add them together, again you will get negative 1. So basically you can prove that 
the box that we have here is valid. If you add floor of x and floor of negative x, you will get 0 for integer values of x and negative 1 for non-integer values. This is really interesting for our equation. We can simplify what we have on the right hand side and just write 0 or negative 1. Let's do that. To do this, let's start with integer values. If x is integer, then obviously floor of 2x is going to be just 2x, floor of x is going to be just x, and on the right hand side, we can simplify floor of x plus floor of negative x and write it as 0. At the end, we will have 3x to the power of 2 is equal to 0, so x needs to be 0. Since x is 0 and an integer, then all conditions are true and we are happy. Let's move on with x doesn't belong to integer numbers. If x is not an integer, then the right hand side can be simplified and written as negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3. For the left hand side, let's keep it as is for now. At the end, we will have floor of 2x to the power of 2 minus floor of x to the power of 2 is equal to 3. So what we have is the equation that you are seeing here. We still have floor of x and floor of 2x, and we need to simplify that even further. From now on, we are going to divide x into the integer part and fraction part. However, we are going to use a trick here. We are going to assume that the fraction part is always positive. That's very tricky because it's going to help us to not do repeated task over and over again. We are going to see that in a bit, but let's review two examples here. Let's assume that x, which is a value that has fraction, is a number like 1.5. So we are going to divide that and write it into two parts, 1 plus half. Obviously, floor of x is going to be 1 here. Now, let's make it more complicated and assume that x is a negative number. Obviously, you can write it as negative 1 minus half. But we are not going to do that here. Instead, we are going to write it as negative 2 plus half. In this case, first of all, note that the fraction part is positive that satisfies the constraint that we added. Second, notice that floor of x here is going to be negative 2, which is exactly the integer part that we started with. So, if we write x as n plus f for positive values of f, and remember f cannot be 0 here, then floor of x is going to be n, no matter what sign we have for n. For both positive and negative values of n, floor of x is going to be n. That's very important. We are going to benefit from it a lot, as you are going to see in a few seconds. Now that we know x can be written as n plus f and floor of x is equal to and our life is going to be easier. We are going to rewrite the equation and simplify it as power of 2 of floor of 2x minus n squared is equal to 3. Note that instead of writing floor of x, we wrote n. Since we observe that no matter what sign we have for x, floor of x is going to be n, which is the integer part here, 
and we always have a positive fraction f here. Now let's move on. To be able to work with floor of 2x, we need to add another trick. Remember, x can be written as a fraction and the integer part. Here, we assume that the fraction is p. If we do this, then we can write 2x as 2 times n plus 2 times p. And now we need to work with this value that we are going to see here. The trick that we are going to use starts with noting that you can simplify and write floor of an integer and a fraction as that integer plus floor of that fraction. In other words, we can simplify floor of 2n plus 2p and write it as 2n plus floor of 2p. That's really interesting. If you don't understand it well, try to come up with some examples. Since 2n is always integer, we can take it out from the floor function. Now we have the equation that you are seeing here at the end. We have power of 2 of 2n plus floor of 2p minus power of 2 of n is equal to 3. What values can we have for floor of 2p? First of all, remember p is a fraction. It's between 0 and 1. You can imagine that if p is less than half, we're going to have a different situation compared to when p is greater than half. We're going to talk about that in a few seconds. As we said, we need to take care of 2p here. To do this, we need to divide it into two parts. Let's assume that p is a fraction between 0 and 1 over 2. Note that we don't have equality for both sides of this inequality here. For p is equal to 0, then we will have an integer, which is something we don't assume here. We assume that x, the value that we started with, is not integer. For the other case, when p is equal to 1 over 2, we need to take care of it later. So p is between 0 and 1 over 2. And then 2 times p is going to be between 0 and 1. Obviously, floor of 2p is going to be 0 here. So the equation can be simplified and written as 3 to the power of 3 times n squared equals to 3. And n can be plus or minus 1. Let's start with 1. If n is 1, then n plus p is going to be between 1 and 3 over 2. If n is negative 1, then n plus p is going to be between negative 1 and negative half. Both of these ranges are valid in our case, and they are possible answers. Finally, we need to consider the case that p is between half and 1. Here we have equality for the left hand side. If we have p greater than or equal to half and less than 1, then 2p can be between 1 and 2, and then floor of 2p is going to be 1. If we do this, then we will have 2n plus 1 to the power of 2 minus n squared equals to 3. Now we need to simplify and solve it for integer values of n, since n is integer. This is a quadratic equation, and you can see that we are not going to be able to find any integer value to satisfy the final equation. So no solution here. And the only solutions that we can have are the ones that we've discussed. Thanks for watching the video. If you would like to see more puzzles, math involved activities, and problems from different math competitions and Olympiads, 
please kindly subscribe to this channel. This is the Security Channel. I hope to see you in the next video.